why wait for the patient to have metastasis and then treatment if you could have means of preventing that patient from developing metastasis. Once the, unfortunately, the tissue has developed a tumor, um, that tumor could either remain in the tissue where it was developed, and this is what we would define saying when someone is diagnosed with breast cancer or oral cancer or liver cancer, that uh, pertains to the tissue, the tumor when it's in that tissue. What we pay much more attention is that why in many patients actually, those tumors acquire the ability to spread to other organs, which is the process that is called metastasis. It breaks, if you think about it, all the rules that cells have as we develop and say, okay, once you have been defined as a liver cell, you should remain in the liver. It's very conceptually weird that somehow that cell eventually decides to leave the liver and colonize the lung. It's a, it's a huge anomaly, you know? So from all the aspects of cancer, we are really focusing on that. We see that there are many uh, genes and proteins uh, related to fatty acids. No? And looking at, okay, what can those genes mean? We saw that uh, not only the cell has the ability to create its own fat, but that it had a very high expression, so they have very high levels, you know, of uh, one of the doors, the main doors of fatty acid entry into the cell. We are consuming uh, much more of these saturated fats that we were doing not so long ago, 30, 40 years ago. Eh? I'm not saying this is causing cancer, and we have to be very careful about that. What I'm saying is that if a person unfortunately has developed a tumor, and if that tumor has already acquired the potential to metastasize, having a diet rich in these type of fats is certainly boosting the potential. From a therapeutic perspective, what we are putting a lot of effort is to find therapeutic means to sort of like uh, block, block the entry of those fatty acids into the cancer cell. Because we know that if that is done, the uh, metastatic cell just doesn't do well at all. In some tumors, the metastasis is completely gone. Something that you very rarely see, like in biology, Blacks and whites are rarely, you know, you're always sort of like more or less, but not all or nothing. You know? In some of the tumors, it really has become an all or nothing. The metastatic cells inside the primary tumor, they hardly proliferate. So you try to treat those with the conventional chemotherapy, which is aimed at killing proliferative cells, the metastatic cells, they don't care, you know? Uh, again, the thing, primary tumors mostly rely on sugar, yet the metastatic cells rely on fat. You know, so we needed to learn all these things. And uh, the technology was not there yet. Why can we look at these things now in great detail? We are applying technology in my lab and in, in many other labs in the world that even four or five years ago, they were unthinkable. What I would love to see is treatments aimed at the prevention of metastasis. Because we know that we have very good candidates for that. So saying uh, the patient may arrive to uh, the clinic and that patient fortunately doesn't have a metastasis, but when you look at his or her primary tumor, wherever that is, it has many high chances that it will metastasize. How great would it be to start treating there? Something that would prevent that patient from ever having metastasis.